This is shocking. It's always shocking. And I insist on being shocked. I'm never going to become immune. I think that's a kind of failure to see so much of it that you die inside. I want to be surprised and shocked every time. You have in your writing certainly marginalized whites. Why are they of no particular interest to you, or seemingly no particular interest? <laughs> Well, I was interested in another kind of literature that was not just confrontational, black versus white. I was really interested in black readership. And I wanted to do, I think, for me, the allegory or the parallel is, is, is black music, which is as splendid and complicated and wonderful as it is because its audience was within its primary audience. The fact that it has become universal worldwide, anyone, everyone can play it, and it has evolved, is because it wasn't tampered with and editorialized within the community. So I wanted the literature that I wrote to be that way. I could just go straight to where the soil was, where the fertility was in this landscape, and also, I wanted to feel free not to have the white gaze in this place that was so precious to me, which is the work. And you will maintain this safe place for yourself, for your art? You don't think you will ever change and write books that incorporate white, white lives into them substantially? I have done. Mm. In, in a substantial paradise. way? You can't understand how powerfully racist that question is, can you? Because you could never ask a white author, when are you going to write about black people? Whether he did or not, or she did or not. Mm. Even the inquiry comes from a position of being in the center. And being used to being in the center. And being used to being in the center. Mm. And saying, you know, is it ever possible that you will enter the mainstream? It's inconceivable that where I already am is the mainstream. Oh, no, I, that, that wasn't the implication of my question. I think you are very, very much in the mainstream, but it's a question of the, the subject of your narrative, whether you want to alter the parameters of it, whether you see any, um, any benefit in doing that, or will you clearly see disadvantages in doing it from your own point of view? Artistic disadvantages. There are no pluses for me. Being an African-American writer is sort of like being a Russian writer who writes about Russia in Russian for Russians. And the fact that it gets translated and read by other people is a benefit. It's a plus. But he's not obliged to ever consider writing about French people or Americans or anybody. When we were talking earlier about you being or not being in the mainstream, you are sure in the mainstream when it comes to public acclaim. I can't tell you how satisfying it is to know that I have earned a readership that is that large, as large as it is. I stood at the border, stood at the edge, and claimed it as central claimed it as central, and let the rest of the world move over to where I was. And this uh, grand thing, the Nobel Prize. That's grand. <laughs> I imagine it is a wonderful thing to receive. Does that alter people's attitudes towards you? Sometimes, yes. Oh, yeah. All prizes do, but particularly that one. Sometimes they respond to you as though you weren't a person. As so though everything you said was sort of uh, capable of being carved into marble. It was so stunning, a surprise to me. I felt very representational. I felt American for probably the first time in my life. I felt uh, representative of all African Americans, and I felt hugely uh, a woman receiving this prize because that's 
not too common in the halls of the Nobel, you know, uh, alumni. So I felt all those things, knowing full well, as one always does, that no prize has ever made it easier. You still have to look at that blank page, and all of that was always going to be my problem. <laughs> Leaving all of that uh, to one side, the publicity and all the rest of it, the acclaim, do you these days sit back when you're writing, read over a phrase that you've just written and say, my God, that's beautiful? Occasionally. I'm aware of what's very really beautiful, things that I think came off really well. And I'm also aware of the sentences that I have written that at last I know how I should rewrite them even long after the book's been published. <laughs> Tony Morrison, it's been great pleasure meeting you. Thank you very much. My pleasure.